to the first country in the eye of the shrine, and here we are, uh, starting another series, kind of. We'll see. But, pretty much, um, basically, I have in the last month started the first steps of getting my first car. Which, just as a disclaimer, I, because I make, like, three dollars a month, um, I can't, you know, actually buy it, so it's, in reality, it's going to be my grandpa buying it for me, um, because I can't do a quote-unquote, a quote, wheel drop, unquote, um, because I'm too sick, no employer would realistically hire me, um, but yeah. And, but regardless of that, we have agreed that over the last, over the next couple of months, we will save up monies to buy a new car. Um, so I can have a car that I'm truly comfortable with when I'm getting my driver's license, which by the way, because I'm sickly, I got my learner's permit when I was 18. I am just now getting my driver's license at 24. Yes, Florida allows you to have your driver's license for, for that long. Um, but yeah, so this is the last year I can have a learner's permit, and I might not be able to get another one or renew it. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't looked that up or anything, but that's, you know, the assumption that I wanted to, and I wanted to get my driver's license by the time I ran out of my learner's permit anyway. So, yeah, one of the reasons why I have been, and I haven't driven much in the last three years because I've just been too sick for it. Um, and I'm feeling better, so I'm going to try, uh, well, I, I have already driven twice already, or three times already in the last a week, uh, in the last week or so, so that's good. Um, and another thing which I need to work out is my sheer nervousness at driving, because I'm not a bad driver, it's just that I'm really nervous while driving, and I have ADD, which makes it all the worse. Basically, don't talk to me when I'm driving. I can, ha I can help adjust that by playing Forza and live streaming it while talking. That will help, but still. Um, and another thing that would help with my nervousness is actually modern safety features, which is one of my priorities, obviously. But anyway, so what am I looking for my first car? Well, as you can see here, priorities. I share like confident like my mom share right here, which I do everything from, because it because of my nausea and just normal illness, normal meanness, normal sickness. It, uh, I getting a getting a car in which I can be comfortable as to not be nauseous is a dumb idea. Because I wouldn't use it a lot in the driver's seat, at least. And I wouldn't feel comfortable in the passenger seat. Examples of this in our family is the CRV, is our Toyota's everything. Um, examples of feeling comfortable in my family is the, is the Chevy Suburban and the big van. Which is a Ford uh, conversion van. Which a conversion van, by the way, is when you take a Ford normal van, utility van, and add seats and stuff into it make it make it more make it into a nice lavish passenger experience by the way so that's my first one the second one is performance um that's another thing which i want i don't want i i don't want my first car to basically punish me for driving it um uh, as well as not be have not have refined controls snappy controls uh, examples of that in our family are the Toyotas. I've, I've only driven one Toyota, which is my sister's RAV4, and the performance was actually okay. I liked it, actually. But the steering was off and the brakes were off. Um, and apparently that's just normal for Toyota. Toyota just doesn't want to make normal responses, or normal, um, accurate steering wheels and brakes for some unknown reason. Um. But anyway, so that's my second one. My third one is modern safety features. 
um, such as blind spot mo monitoring um, and stuff like that, basically stuff that I can be more confident while driving that I didn't miss something, which is something I have an issue with. And also stuff that I can e more easily relax knowing that the car will at least try to keep an eye out. I will still look, I'm not going to rely on it heavily, it's just I'm going to use it as a peace of mind thing. Next up is electrics plug-in or hybrid. Now my now my now I've been wanting an electric all my life practically, um, or actually all my life actually. Although to be honest with you, I haven't wanted an electric all my life, as you can probably tell by their story. I wanted a hydrogen vehicle, but unfortunately, uh, but unfortunately, the Florida government hasn't you know expanded or hasn't made a hydrogen vehicle network yet. Um, that's most unfortunate, especially considering how much water we have and how much air we have. We have plenty of hydrogen everywhere. Converting it is not the hardest thing to do. It just requires power. And, you know, you could just have a little converter station in, in the hydrogen gas station anyway. Have tax breaks, stuff like that. Make it green, make it fun, make it basically, uh, basically, oh. Ah, chrome. Chrome, 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 chrome. Um. But basically, uh, like hydrogens are the best of electrics and the best of gas. They, and they're safer than both. Uh, um, basically, a hydrogen is, um, it feels like a gas, it feels like, like a gas car, but it's green, and it's actually green because it's hydrogen. Unless you have a hydrogen power plant or renewable, or any other type of renewable power plant. Um, then it's completely green as opposed to efficiently green where you're paying where you're pay where you, where you fill something up for 80 kilowatt hours for a full electric vehicle um, in 20 in 2019 you fill it up for 80 kilowatt hours which is like nine dollars in your electric bill which is nothing for a power plant um, so it's really efficient even it's uh, electric cars still efficient green wise with using your um, natural gas power plant, which we have now, because we got rid of a heart, we got rid of a nuclear, we got rid of our nuclear power plant, uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for natural gas, because it's cleaner. Okay, I'm kidding. It, it, uh, uh, I'm kidding. The, our coal power plant used, our clean coal power plant used to have these, used to have these, uh, cooling towers for smokestacks. That, that's why, when, and I actually believe, and actually I thought that was a nuclear power plant growing up for the first couple of years of my life, which was interesting, but yeah. And everyone who came to Florida until we got rid of it, um, by demolishing it, actually, or by switching to natural gas and demolishing the smokestacks, or the, the cooling towers, um, that we had a nuclear power plant. But anyway, so going on to electrics, um, electrics are the next best bet to hydrogen. Because you simply plug it in and, and be done with it. Um, electrics are as greenish where you power it with. Um, and as long as you don't, you know, decide to junk it and throw it into a river, I don't understand how it's not green to produce one. I mean, I guess the air in the mine is not green, but it's not that bad compared to gas. Um, but anyway. So, going on for our electrics, as you can see, neither of these, neither of these, neither of my frontrunners are actually electric. Uh, are, are actually fully electric, um, because simply the best, the best fully electric car in this sort of price range, um, is the Chevy Bolt. And it's tiny, it's smaller than you, and probably doesn't use your, it was, probably isn't as efficient with space as the Mazda is. So I decided to sell for a plug-in, which the plug-in for this Cape is not out yet. Um, and why plug-in? Because plug-in is the best of technically, it's technically a really good intermediary between electrics, hydrogen, and, and, you know, and gasoline cars. Or, and, uh, Fossil fuel cars, you know, have a shove in, have the shove in uh, diesel in as well. 
because plugins are basically hybrids in which you can plug in with a bigger battery to charge it up at night. Like for example, the plug-in escape is uh, Ford says will have at least 30 miles range. Ho they're hoping for around 40. And you can take it up to and in the hybrid you can take the EV mode up to 85 already, and it can maintain it, and you can pretty well accelerate in it. Or at least I think so. Watching some videos I watched. Uh, but yeah. And then moving on to HUD. Another issue I have with driving is looking down to look at the ma panel. Like I was driving, uh, I I uh, like I was driving on a highway. Uh, at 55, which is the legal speed limit on that highway, and I was looking out of the panel. I know, and I was overcorrecting. Or at least I felt like I was overcorrecting. It was not a good feeling. I did not like it. When I was looking down to look at the uh, miles, uh, when I was looking at the miles per hour, so I want a HUD, so I don't have to look down. And then, better, and then next up is better MPG than the 2009 CRV, which is the CRV we have. Both of these are superior to it. I bet you're barely, and you're much more. Uh, grandma can fit. My grandma has issues getting out of vehicles. Um, she doesn't have as much issues getting in and out of a suburban because it has because it has a running board and it has a pull, and has a pull up thing, and it, the doors are nice and big and wide and stuff like that. Uh, whereas she had actually she has some issues getting to the CRV we have, um, and she even and she has more issues getting to the Escape. And maybe she doesn't have as much issues getting to the Mazda, but we haven't but we haven't checked yet. Um, we, like I said, we, I looked at that, yes, I looked at the Mazda CX-30 yesterday, and it seems like it'd be okay, big door, it's not that high off the ground, um, it's never, it does not have as much of a lip on the uh, door frame, I don't think so, anyway, so it shouldn't be that bad, other than it's a bit snug, because it's tiny. I mean, it's not tiny for being a subcompact, but it's still a subcompact. I think uh, kids seeds because I do plan on having kids one day, and I would definitely be having, and definitely, um, and definitely which, and definitely either or of these will last, will have to last. Would will, will um, I'll be using it into my 40s at the very least. Like I said, I'm 24, so I'll be using it for 20 years. But anyway, so looking, so that's now the priorities. What are who are the who are the participants in this journey? Well, the two current front runners are the Escape and the Mazda. Uh, it took me uh, uh, basically I've been looking up, I've been looking up, I've been looking um, this stuff up for a good solid month now, and the original and basically the top four um, is the 2024 Escape plugin. Ignore that. Uh, the Mazda CX-30. 2020 or this 2020 Mazda 630, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in, and the 2013 Chevy Volt. Tiro was the first one I looked at, and I didn't know about the I didn't know about any of the other three, uh, any of the any of the other four until then. Uh, I was looking at the Chevy Volt and Bolt and seeing which one was better. It turns out the Chevy Volt is old; you have to get it used. Um. And being how this part of Florida is, I don't know if I could ever, I don't know if I have a repair shop that could ever repair a Chevy Volt. Um, and stuff like that. So that's going to make it difficult. And we had to get it from Carvana as well. Carvana has a $2,000, it adds $2,000 to, uh, to the price of its vehicles. So it's kind of out of the running for surely that alone. Otherwise, it's really nice. So it's still in the running because it's really nice. It doesn't have a HUD, by the way. It has modern. It had modern. They had really good safety features back in its day, but they're not modern safety features. They're good, but they're not as good as modern cars. Um, it's also, it's also fifteen thousand, which is nice. Um, they're seventeen thousand, which is nice, but yeah. 
All right, moving on to the Outlander plugin. It's big. It's big. There's a lot of cargo space. And it doesn't check off any other box. <laughs> I mean, it has, sure, like, comfort, sure, performance, no. It, it's smooth, but it's slow. It doesn't turn, either. Modern Safety Features, at the price point that we would have to get, no. Uh, it has some, but not many. Is it a plug-in? Yeah, it is. That's why it's still in the running. It also has... Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Wait. Got one more. There you go, all-wheel drive. And, uh, it, it has all-wheel drive. Uh, the plug-in Escape does not have all-wheel drive. Why all-wheel drive, you might be, want to be wondering, because I prefer it's... I prefer it's... Uh, character, I prefer its driving characteristics to front wheel drive, definitely, um, and and even to rear wheel drive, um, and also it's safer being able to have more traction on the road, being able to control it, checking control, checking control can control it better, stuff like that. Um, maybe, I live in Florida. We have ha we have land and houses on dirt roads. Also, Florida. Florida has a lot of dirt everywhere. It's a lot of sand. Um, All-wheel drive is helpful. It also rains a lot in Florida, so all-wheel drive is helpful and stuff like that. Um, could the Outlander take out? Could you have grandma fit? Probably. Have better MPG than CRV? Yep. But, nope. Um, yeah. Basically, that's it. Next up is good old CX-30. CX-30 in CX-30 land, we got... Oh, it's so nice. Uh, Mazda has really outdone themselves with the CX-30, and also, to be fair, so has uh, so has Ford outdone themselves with the Escape. Um, but Mazda outdone themselves a bit more than Ford has done the Escape. Ford was just... Ford was just making a really good crossover. Mazda was taking a piece of art. Um, in all the ways. Like, Mazda outdid themselves with the, with the CX-30. It's just well-balanced um, in terms of in terms of luxury, in terms of comfort, in terms of use of space, in terms of literally everything. Um, it feels premium, despite its price tag. Which, I mean, it, it's, a bit, it's a bit more expensive than other... Uh, subcompacts, but it's a more luxury, more luxurious, and more performancey, and more um, <laughs> sorry, um, looks big way, and more uh, more luxur, more luxurious, more performancey, um, and more and and slightly longer. But another thing about the um, uh, another thing about the uh. The Mazda CX-30. I mean, and and everything just feels right. It feels perfectly fitted. It feels like a it feels like a pocket watch or a jet fighter. It feels just really fine and perfect. Um, like everything is where you absolutely would love it to be. Um, there is no waste. There, there, there is no waste of space. There is just it's just well done. Um. Like for example, you can see on the steering wheel barely in this barely in this render, but on the steering wheel, um, like can I scroll? I want to switch to zoom in. There we go. You can see in there. Yeah. There's the HUD, which basically Mazda is my factory that will show you the HUD existing. Well, these are terrible pictures. But yeah, basically every every um, basically every control on the steering wheel has a has a th has a thumb toggle. The um, the infotainment system, well, it is a tiny bit small uh, for its for the size it takes up on the dashboard. Uh, like it has a lot of bezel, uh, which I don't quite mind. Um, but it's perfectly in the view of your perfectly in the view of your eyes. Also on the uh, also. It's controlled by a little. It's controlled by a little knob on the um, right behind the shifter. 
um, which is really nice. Basically, you put your hand on the foot. You can put, you can basically, so if you want to use the infotainment system, you just memorize, like a controller, memorize the, uh, you, mem you memorize its layout, its four buttons um, around it, and then you just spin it back and forth while watching the infotainment system while, while driving, and it's really, really nice. Um, like, there, like, that is, like, that what that, that's why I might like it better than the escape is because of je just the you don't need to take your attention from the road. It's just really, really well done. Um, instead of like to escape the escape, you have got to go up and push the touchscreen, which of course, if you know me, I don't like touchscreens. Um, and touchscreens have a have a place, but even in a car, they have a place. But you should also have a you should also have a little knob next to you or a little joystick. So you can easily navigate it without having to reach up and touch it, um, and stuff like that. Because touching, because touch screens are more, are more, uh, touch screens require more con concentration and more focus than using a knob. And they're slower and stuff like that as well. Like, like, like the touch, like that is a bit nippy. Um, but what I've said in all these, I said in all these cars. Um, at least once to escape, I've done twice, and the mo uh, I'm, and I plan to do it a third time because I said a Mazda, um, because I said in the Mazda, um, but anyway, so I plan to go going back and try to escape again. But anyway, uh, so yeah, it's just really really nice, and also these controls are a nice race, but so it's to escape, so that's fair. So that's fair. I like look at the interior of the escape. Switch photo. There we go. Like it also has a raised up one. Um, and the touchscreen is in a really good spot as well on the escape. It's just that it's a touchscreen. And I have nails. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be much of an issue. And like these control. Uh, like like these like these sticks. Like this stick is for or like this toggle is for cruise control. And this one is for the heads up. This and this one's for the um. The driver's display is both heads up and that, and the gauges, and the, well, the dashboard. The thing about the Mazda is it has good performance. Uh, I assume it has good turn. I assume it has good turning. Watch a video. Uh, I've been watching videos on it, and it seems like the six-speed transmission might be slight, might be a slight issue. Not because it doesn't work. It's because it's lim it's it's limiting the vehicle with not having two more speeds. Um, So like that might be an issue. It also has a manual. It also has a manual toggle for the e shifter, whereas the whereas the escape obviously does not because it just has a little has a little knob for the drive modes. Um, and overall, I'm really really happy to Mazda. However, it does have some issues. A being a bit small, and B not being and B not being a plug-in. It also has a HUD. It has a really good HUD. It doesn't have as much features on the HUD though, which is disappointing, but still. But, uh, yeah, it's just really well done. Good job, Mazda. Um, then we can go to the Escape, which was the full runner until I got until I sat in the Mazda. Um, until I sat in the Mazda, to be honest. And the Escape. Oh, the Escape. It feels like a suburban. Whereas the Mazda feels like a race car. It feels like a luxurious race car. Um, the escape feels like a suburban. It feels like an SUV, which is nice. I haven't driven any of these because I have a learner's permit, and you can't and you can't test drive if you have a learner's permit, at least not in Florida. I don't think it's a law or anything; it's just no one will allow you to do such a thing. Um, I want to get my driver's license, so we'll test drive these, get a feel for them. Um, basically, got to go off. What other, what other people say. But anyway, so the Escape, like I said, feels like a Suburban. It's nice and comfy. It just, it's nice and comfy while still allowing to reach all the controls. All the controls are in the right spots. Um, you know, it's just a different experience. Like Again, like the Mazda feels like a sports car. The Escape feels like an SUV. Now, from one... Now, from one uh, now from one uh, video I was watching, 
the escape uh, ha the escape seems to have really really nice performance um, the Mazda might not um, but the escape hybrid at least has really has a really nice um, just a nice just nice acceleration nice turning nice everything and yeah all right, we're right. uh, gonna take a drink of something. But yeah, I mean, overall, I just really like the Escape, and again, it's gonna be in the. Now what? Now what does the? Now what flaws did the Escape have? Um, Chevrolet Comfort, it has Chevrolet Comfort. They both do. Performance, and has that. Modern safety features, they both have perfect. Um. It, uh, the escape is a plug-in. The escape has a HUD. The escape is better MPG. Grandma can fit. Not better than the CRV, maybe a bit worse. Kid seats, yes. All-wheel drive, no. Not enough to plug-in. It doesn't. Excuse me. No, the plug-in it doesn't. Oh, sorry, GRT. Okay. No, in the plug-in it doesn't. That's disappointing. But I can live without a uh, wheel drive. Can I live? Uh, can I live without uh, being being a plug-in, especially coming into the future? Can I live without the monster being a plug-in and using a lot ton of gas? Because it's not basically it. It's barely, it's basically the modern standard, and it's still better than the CRV, but not by much. So the, the question really, so that's the really, that's the really, that's like the, that's the question. Does the knob on the Mazda make up for not being a plug-in? And does the escape more, you know, more SUV like interior make up for um, more. Well, does the escape being a plug in make up for the knob? Because what's what's more important being slightly being slightly more being slightly more quick with entertainment system infotainment system or getting th 30 at least three uh three miles every day. This is being we use. 30 miles every day, which probably not. Like that is that is the million dollar question for me. And like I love them both is the issue. But the Mazda does feel more toy to me than actual car, whereas the Escape feels like an actual car. Um, this fight. Both rel have relatively the same cargo space, somehow magically. The Escape has roomier back seats, since I'm, a, since I'm a family man, that makes sense. We have more back seats. And that's like, like, like that. this is the hard bit. Is because they're both really, really good, but we'll, what, 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 what? Would I be more happy with the plugin or the knob? Because I roughly feel the same in bo in both vehicles. But I mean, this is something that we want. This is something that I. This is something that I wasn't going to decide. That I don't think I was going to be going to decide today. But I was just like, you know, like the first, uh, like the first month of me getting, uh, or thinking about getting, uh, getting a car, a vehicle, or a crossover in this case. And this is the sticking point, is it's really, really difficult. Now, I would need to test drive them, yes, so I can actually see the performance for myself instead of having to, um, Instead of having to uh, get be told it or or be experienced it from a passenger seat, but yeah, uh, it's just it's a really really hard decision.
Um, and as you can tell, I don't really care about the exterior. Both look fine. I like them both, so there's not much. Like, there's not much more to be said. All right, so that'll be it for this video. If you want to, if you want me to go over more of these cars, having said in both, um, like my thoughts on them more, more individually than just, uh, just a quick summary, uh, let me know. And this was just the first video. It wasn't meant to be too in depth about anything. But anything, it was supposed to be just, just letting you know that I'm trying to, that I'm doing this and, um, what's the first steps are. So yeah, or were. So yeah, that'll be it for this video. Um, also, this also means I won't be doing as much game, um, much new games as well to save up for these vehicles. And over the next few years, as we're paying one of these off, uh, it's going to be the same. Uh, it's going to, um, uh, it's going to be the same thing. I'm not having as much new games, but I will be able to do videos on these vehicles as well. So anyway, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Really do appreciate watching this video. If nothing else, be off me if you were to check out stuff on the screen, including Death Star Life for 2040s. Uh, my first novel, where you follow, uh, it's a sci fi action adventure war novel where you follow their traumatic life and friends as they go on missions to maintain the perfect world they have built over the last, over the last 15 years. Alright, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. And. Oh, oh and by the way. Uh, nah, man. Nah. And by the way, I'll link the side. I link the side by sides of Kelly Blue Book and um the field comic dot gov in the description, so you can see those as well as I'll link uh for dot com and Mazda dot com in the description as well. All right, so that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate watching this. So that ready? All right, that'll be it for this video. And I guess see you. It's good.